Uh, Sam, I'll kick off with you on this one. Red Bull, do you think, probably Verstappen very specifically, do you think he's got enough at Hungary to challenge those Mercedes that were so strong in Austria? Well, speaking of Verstappen specifically, and in fact his counterpart, Alexander Albon, I was a little disappointed with the, the last weekend performance for Albon. I mean, you're in the second best car of the season, and you were... Where were you? You were, you were nowhere. You were 40 seconds off the fight for the front. That's ridiculous. You need to support your teammate. And we're going to a track now that is, is a bit of a safety ground for both Red Bull and Mercedes. Both teams alike have always done very well around here. It really suits both cars. Uh, the Ferraris always languish, of course, at that straight line speed, which I don't have anymore either. Um, so I, I, I think the album needs to step up his game here. If he's going to deliver something, now is the time to deliver. He needs to support that teammate. But yeah, Verstappen is the likely one to lead the line, as always. Uh, probably up against Hamilton. Hamilton has always also done pretty well in Hungary. We saw that epic fight last time out where Hamilton was hunting down Verstappen for about, what, 15 laps, I think it was. Second after second after second of those fresh tyres. And he just passed him with so much ease after But what a dramatic moment. One of the best moments of last season. Do I think that will happen again? Probably not. That feels like a big one-off. But do I think that it's going to be Verstappen v Hamilton at Hungary? I'd like to think so. Red Bull do have uh, upgrades rumoured to arrive. I think that that Red Bull's downforce once again is always fantastic. And the Honda engine deficit, although it is smaller uh, in this day and age that we have here in 2020, it, it's, it's not going to be as impacted, I don't think, by the, the straight line speed that you get around Hungary. Of course, there's only one proper straight. It's the start-finish straight. One of the shortest start-finish straights that we have. I think it's around the same length as Australia. Very small. So the Mercedes doesn't get the chance to stretch its legs as much as it would maybe, let's say, around Austria or China or something like that. It really balances the playing fields. Although Hamilton is so strong around Hungary. We're seeing it time after time how good he is. Bottas has also done well around here, and of course, when those two are both on form, Mercedes are not unstoppable. I, I do think this is going to be a Mercedes victory. I do think Mercedes have got a lot in the locker, but I'm excited to see Verstappen and hopefully Albon really take it to them. I think it might be closer than what we had in Austria, sorry, in the Styrian Grand Prix last time around. I do think it's going to be a closer gap. I'm hoping so anyway, for the, the viewers' sake. Yeah, I think we went into Austria, and indeed Styria, hoping that, that Red Bull would mount that challenge to, to Mercedes. And even though Verstappen, obviously race one, he didn't get much of a chance to show it. Race two, he, he was there, never really competed with Hamilton for the win. He did obviously hold off Bottas for a large percentage of the race. Still not quite enough to deny Mercedes of that one too. Harry, do you think that the Red Bull guys are going to get a bit, bit closer at a track that, at least on paper, suits them a bit more? Uh, I do, and I think the the, the sort of data from um, Austria, Styria, the Red Bull ring, um, kind of indicates the Red Bull are quite good in the slow corners, and there aren't a lot of slow corners at uh, the Red Bull ring. Um, but yeah, I, I, just, I, I would not be surprised if it was a Verstappen versus Hamilton scenario again. Um, Botta... Bottas will probably be in the mix too. Whether Albon will be, Red Bull need Albon to be because, you know, every time they've got this, you know, pincer movement, they've got to fend off from. They're trying to attack one Mercedes, normally Hamilton, and defend from the other, normally Bottas, and it just can never work out because you're trying to look in front and behind at the same time. So they need Albon to be there too. Um, but for the win, I would probably say Hamilton versus Verstappen. They're both pretty, pretty impressive around. Uh, around the Hungara ring and we saw in quali for, for uh, the race last weekend I mean Hamilton was above clear above uh, everyone else but it was those two who were fighting it out for pole there was no other no one else was going to touch them so um yeah I would be 95% sure it was going to be those two for for the win uh, there's a bit of weather about again this weekend which should make things a bit spicy um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like Sam says, I'd be impressed if we had the same sort of scenario again as last year. But I'm not going to say no to it. It was great, so bring it on. And on, on that point on, on Alex Alban and needing to be um, a, a bit more competitive to, to work his way into the strategy, I think people sometimes look at it maybe too simplistically and think that when Alban isn't in that picture for the lead, it, it negatively affects the Constructors' Championship effort by Red Bull and that's it. 
when in actual fact, as proven at Hungary last year, uh, as proven last time out in Styria, it's not just the Constructors' Championship that's negatively affected, it's also the Drivers' Championship. Verstappen's efforts to win a race are completely compromised when another driver on his team doesn't factor into the strategy. So um, he'll be hoping that Albon, even if he's not right on his, on his tail, he can at least impact decisions, strategic decisions made by Mercedes um, so that, that that doesn't leave him out to dry, essentially. Um, speaking of leaving out to dry, there is a lot of rain in the forecast. Hopefully, Verstappen can get a bit closer to, if there is rain, uh, Verstappen can get a bit closer to, to Hamilton than what was the case at Austria. Of course, one of the shortest circuits on the calendar. Uh, sorry, the, well, the quickest lap on the calendar. Um, and it was over a second difference between them in qualifying. I know Verstappen had that error on his final run, but it... it in all likelihood, that was still going to be about seven, eight tenths of a second. So hopefully Verstappen can get a bit closer than that if it is indeed a wet qualifying. Um, the fact of the matter is, if, if anyone's going to stop Mercedes at this point, it's, it's going to be Red Bull. Unless Ferrari turn up at Hungary and these upgrades are the greatest upgrades ever seen, it's only going to be Red Bull that can challenge Mercedes. And if they're going to do so tracks like the Hungara Ring, races like the Hungarian Grand Prix, they they aren't nice to wins. They're, they're imperative. If, if they can't win races like that, they haven't got a hope in hell. They might not have a hope in hell anyway, looking at the straight line speed advantage of Mercedes in Austria. Um, not every circuit is like the Hungarian Grand Prix where it won't really come into, come into play. Um, but yeah, they have to win this race. They really have to win this race. And let's face it, Verstappen has to win this race. I, I think there is a reasonable chance they could. Um, you know, the, the rain could spice it up, but just focusing, as you said, Harry, on their on their slow speed cornering, it's very good, very good compared to Mercedes. Austria, Mercedes had a massive advantage through high speed corners and through straight line, which at a circuit like the Red Bull Ring is always going to give you a massive chance of victory. Uh, but in in terms of the medium speed corners, I don't think there's much in it. And in terms of those slow speed corners, of which Hungary has a lot of them, Red Bull had a distinct advantage against the Mercedes. So, um, you know, obviously Mercedes are going to set up their car differently. Uh, perhaps, you know, I don't think the focus would have been too much on low speed cornering in Austria. So maybe they can they can eat into that advantage that way. But I think Red Bull do have that do have that advantage. So uh, I think there is every chance they win, whether they do it or not. I'd love to see it. I think there is every chance we do get a Verstappen Hamilton or even a, a Verstappen Bottas fight out front for the win. It'd be fascinating to see. Um, moving on to Ferrari, obviously touched on them. They are bringing further upgrades to Hungary. They brought some of them to the second Austrian Grand Prix. Um, it didn't exactly work. They didn't get much of a chance to show what they were capable of in the race, of course, only lasting a lap. Um, do you think there's any chance that Ferrari improve on their position, which at the moment really is about fifth or sixth best, Sam? No, if I'm totally honest with you, as, as, as short and blunt as I could be, um, I, I genuinely don't. Clearly those upgrades <coughs> were so potent that Leclerc felt the need to um, destroy both cars immediately so they wouldn't be found out. Um, they've never, <laughs> they've never been good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't let anyone see, we're too good. Take the other car out. Um, honestly, they haven't been good at 100 for a very long time. It is one of the weakest tracks for Ferrari we've seen in the last decade, if not since Michael Schumacher drove for them. They have always struggled with the incredibly low downforce tracks. Um, regularly don't win Monaco either, which of course, Hungary is a little bit like Monaco in the type of corners that it provides, it just hasn't got the barriers. Um, I can't see Ferrari being that third best team, you know, fighting with where Red Bull probably usually were at this point of the season, if we were to have a normal season. Um, Ferrari, for me, are still very much going to be, I reckon, lucky if they get both cars into Q3. Uh, the Renault entry seems improved, and both Renault and McLaren, especially Renault if they can sort their overheating issues, seem strong. McLaren have had two fastest laps out of two races. They've got pace. They need to work on their race pace a little bit, but their qualifying pace is fantastic. And the Pink Panthers, they're fantastic. Perez is on great form, and Stroll's even doing a good job, which is great to see. So, it's really, really difficult. I think for Ferrari to almost break back into that top two or three teams. They've got the money, they've got the resources, they've got the team. 
I just don't think they've got the time to develop that quickly, especially for the strange multitude of tracks we've got coming up. Usually, you can plan a whole season of upgrades because you know what kind of tracks you're attacking. You know that when you're going to Oscar, within two tracks' time, you'll be going to Spa and then Monza. And you've got that's all power tracks, so you may as well work on a power element in part of your, your upgrades for your engine. But it's all over the place, and Ferrari struggle when it comes to any kind of strategy anyway. So I don't think they're going to be able to bring the correct upgrades to apply them properly and by that point when they have applied them, would have moved on to somewhere else and I don't know how relevant they'll be. I genuinely think the Ferraris are at max the fourth, maybe fifth fastest team and I think around Hungary, it's really going to show and it's going to be a tough weekend I think for Leclerc and Betty. Yeah, of course, uh, neither... On both, on both of the Austrian Grand Prix weekends, uh, they didn't get two Q3 appearances. You know, Vettel fell in Q2 on that first run. On the second run, it was it was Leclerc that didn't quite make it. Harry, upgrades coming, adding to the ones that were already there. Is it going to make an impact? Um, I mean, for Ferrari's sake, I hope so. Yes. Um, the the. I think they will do better than they did in Austria. I don't, I don't know. Don't know whether that will be anything to do with the upgrades or not. But I think the general feeling is that through corners they're not too bad. Um, for whatever reason, whether it's a draggy car or a, a, a lack of engine um, power or both, um, it's not very good on the straight. So I have a feeling that Ferrari will be improved in uh, in Hungary. Um, I don't see them jumping up to, they're not going to be back to the third best team or anything. I think they'll still be fighting it out on, amongst, you know, Racing Point, McLaren, Renault, as Sam said. Um, but yeah, for, for their sake, they need to not have any, they need a clean race. And they need to, you know, make sure these upgrades do work and at least bring them closer to the, to the front two teams, to, to Mercedes and Red Bull. Um, so I think it will be a better weekend. Uh, I think they will, they will both make it into Q3. I'm not saying they're going to be fifth and sixth but I think they'll both scrape through this time around um, but yeah for, for the love of God Ferrari please make these damn things work yeah I, I was going to kick off this point and say it can't get much worse for Ferrari but knowing them I'm sure they'll give it a go um, I mean, <laughs> it could get worse it could get worse but I don't think it will um, I agree with you Harry I think the it's a shame for them in Austria that they weren't at least able to get some on-track experience with those partial upgrades. Even if they were going around in 19th and 20th for, for 70 laps, at least that's some sort of exposure. Um, they've just got no idea whether they worked or not. So they're basically going into Hungary, trying to work that out, as well as the other upgrades that are coming that were scheduled for this Grand Prix. Um, yeah, that they seem to be very much lacking in terms of engine power. That they were, they were really down. As were the other Ferrari-powered teams in Haas and Alfa Romeo. Uh, that's going to be much less of a factor in Hungary. Um, but you know, I, I think the narrative that they are bad on bad on the straights and okay in the corners isn't wholly true. Um, in low-speed corners, they're still not very good. Um, they're arguably not quite as bad as they are on the straights, but they've still got a long way to go, even against the midfield rivals, let alone the um, let alone the guys at the front. Um, the one area their car does seem to be okay is medium speed corners, um, and Hungary does have a few of those, to be fair, so they might benefit. I, th I think they will have a better weekend, partly due to the upgrades, partly due to... Um, just the, the car being suited to the track which I, I know historically it hasn't been a great track for them but I think you know the car's completely transitioned in terms of uh, what it's bad at so uh, I think they will have a better weekend I actually think they will be slightly ahead of Renault and McLaren um, and I think they, they will be the fourth best team behind Racing Point but um, I don't think there will be a huge amount in it so instead of just being bad at cornering, they're now just bad at everything, which is, it's a great development choice from Ferrari, a, a team that spends hundreds of millions of pounds on the development of their car. Good job, guys. Scathing. Um, and, I mean, we, we do speak about, um, <laughs> we do speak about Bonotto and whether his position is under threat at all in a recent video we've done, so, um, so do check that out. Um, let's move on to some bold predictions.
Harry, bold. You said that Lewis Hamilton wouldn't be on the podium last week. I have some bad news Shh. for you. <laughs> He's wrong again! He was. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what have you got this? I'm sure you're going to have a winning week at some point. So please, what is your bold prediction for Hungary? We've been doing this for about, I don't know, three years now? Maybe around three years. And I can't believe I've not got anything right. Latifi getting a point in the first race is so about as close as I've ever come. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we just spoke about Ferrari. And I have said they're going to be improved. And I, I mean, I do mean I think their pace will be improved. But I don't think either of them are going to score points. Well, Ooh. it's a, a nice and nice and easy one for you to get your first win. No Ferrari scoring points. I know they've been bad, but that's bold. Yeah, is, I'm not saying they're going to crash I mean, into each other. There. I, yeah. I mean, I could get a ball with that, to be honest. Interesting. Oh, that's, a, that's a good shout. I mean, it sounds weird, but at that point, if, if that were to happen, you, you would almost want it to be because of a crash. Because if that's yeah. on pure pace, I think that's more worrying. True. Okay. Anyway. Okay. No Ferrari points from Hungary if you're listening to Harry. If you're listening to Sam, his bold prediction is what? Oh, I'm going down the Harry school of thinking here, so I'm definitely going to be wrong. I don't know why I'm taking advice off a man that's literally never got this right. Um, I think that George Russell will score his first Formula One championship point in this weekend in Hungary. Ooh, Good lord. George! <laughs> oh. George! <laughs> All right. It's, I, I don't know. I, I, it could happen. He ne- I mean, he nearly made uh, he nearly made Q2 there last year, didn't he? So, he did, um, yeah. Maybe it will happen. Maybe it will happen. Um, I've actually gone down the same sort of route, Sam. Um, but I haven't gone for George Russell. I've gone for a driver and indeed a team that have been pretty much as slow as the Williams, so I think it's a pretty similar prediction. Um, I think Is Kevin, it Ferrari? I think Kevin Magnussen will score points this weekend. Oh, it's Haas. The other Ferrari team. Yeah. I would love K-Mag to get some points. I would absolutely love to see him score some points. He deserves it, just for being so Norwegian. Is he Denmark? Is he from Denmark? <laughs> I've offended another country, everyone. Fantastic. Oh. Well, thanks oh. for the thumbs up and, uh, and comics, everyone. I've actually changed my bold prediction. My bold prediction is now <laughs> that Verstappen will win on the basis that he's Somalian. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not going to be allowed to travel outside the UK soon. You can already? <laughs> wow. Sorry to K Mag and to Denmark and to Norway. All right, Paul, one, two, three. Harry, who have you got? Paul, I'm going to go for Maxi Verstappen. He got his, la- his first pole here last year. I think he's going to repeat that. But then for the race win, going for Lewis Hamilton, followed by Maxi Verstappen. Uh, and then P3 will be Valtteri Bottas. All right. Sam, who have you got? Oh, it's so boring, but I'm almost going for literally the same thing. Um, apart from pole will be Lewis Hamilton. I think we're slightly overestimating just how good that Red Bull is going to be. That Mercedes is breathtakingly good at the moment. So I think Louis Ham takes another pole position. I think Louis Ham takes his 86th career victory. I think Max Verstappen goes into second place. And I think Walter Porridge 47.9 loses the Championship League but finishes in third place. Okay, um, I'm going to go for a blessed pole position. I'm going to go for Lewis Hamilton. Um, but I've got faith in the Red Bull. I'm, I've got Verstappen winning the race um, ahead of Hamilton in second. Um, and I can't believe like my my predictions are actually the most exciting for probably the first time ever. I've got Sergio Perez wow. getting third. Oh, Ooh. the pink Mercedes! Yeah, I think Lol. we're going to get three teams on the podium. You'll drive into Albon. Yeah, probably. I just... <laughs> oh, bunning again! <laughs> yeah, Alex Album will be in a podium spot, by the way. Um, but he'll end up uh, he'll end up crashing into something. 